Next on the programme, despite dramatic falls in fundraising, hospices across our region are continuing to help those going through some of the darkest of times. Between March the 23rd and early July, St Luke's Hospice in Plymouth cared for 881 patients and 40% of those were looked after at home. The terrible reality of the impacts of the virus is laid bare tonight by a grieving widow. Jess Hammond was unable to visit her husband Tom as he received end-of-life care at St Luke's Hospice because their two-year-old daughter had shown symptoms of coronavirus. As part of Hospice Care Week, Jess has told the story of Tom's final weeks. It was just really sad but really lovely that they could see each other. Well, that he could see all of us. And she was just putting her hands up to the glass. And he was putting his hand on the glass. It was so nice to obviously see him, because it had been a couple of weeks since I'd seen him at all. Um, but obviously really hard at the same time, because obviously all we wanted to do was I'd give him a cuddle. When Jess Hammond first met her husband to be, she knew he'd already had surgery for a brain tumour. Nine months after their wedding, when their daughter Poppy was just two weeks old, they got the devastating news that the tumour had started to grow again. Early this year, Tom was admitted to hospital. He'd had a bleed on the brain, and doctors warned that his time left was limited. I wasn't aware that the St Luke's team were even in Derriford Hospital. There was a lovely girl called Becky. I spoke to her for probably about an hour, just about anything and everything. Um, and it was really, really nice to have somebody to speak to that was our age. Because like a lot of the things she said, you know, it was almost like she got it because she knew how she would feel. Tom was taken from Derriford Hospital to the St Luke's Hospice at Turnchapel. But then Jess was called by her daughter's nursery to say Poppy had a temperature and they'd both need to self-isolate for 14 days. Just as they were coming to the end of that, lockdown happened and all visiting was banned. So yeah, that, at that point I sort of had to sort of say goodbyes in a way because I didn't even know if I would you know, get to see him again. Um, about two days before me and Poppy were about um, to come out of self-isolation and would be able to go in and see Tom again. Um, lockdown was announced and we weren't allowed to visit at all. There was no visitors. So I think after about three weeks of not seeing Tom, I just wanted to see him. So I, ca I came, drove all the way, um, taking my chances and knocked the door and um, the lady at the door said she'd go and see if there was any way we could see Tom. I had Poppy with me. They kindly brought him um, to see me out through the, a massive window and obviously Poppy went running over. Thankfully, because of the home care services St Luke's offer, Tom was allowed to come home. He spent his last three weeks surrounded by Jess, Poppy, his son Josh and those who love him. Tom was never one to be down or in the dumps or he would he would have hated for people to be miserable and crying around his bed like that was his worst that was his worst nightmare so we made sure that we had like the most positive day we all knew the day was coming i started saying all sorts of stuff he'd be cringing at <laughs> and um like stuff he would say to the children and um, stuff, things that he'd say to Josh and Poppy at bedtime and um, just fell asleep. It's just almost like he waited for everyone to go and then, you know, for me to have like those final words or whatever with him, and then he just went. That was Jess Hammond speaking to our reporter Jackie Bird there. And if you've been affected by any of the issues in Jackie's report, head online for links to charities that can help.